early 2000s, you were part of a, a, you know, a contingent that was trying to bring some sanity to the place. What was it that you were trying to accomplish in the main? Well, what had happened, uh, Steve, was that there was a, a, uh, a ceasefire, which the Norwegians had a great deal to do in negotiating. The, the, a lot of outside countries had taken a great deal of interest in saying, let's try to uh, get the fighting uh, stopped. Uh, and frankly, both sides felt they could win a military victory. Um, and uh, the events of 9-11 really changed it. 9-11, uh, first of all, had an impact on the kind of funding and support that the LTTE could get from the wider uh, Tamil diaspora around the world. And secondly, uh, the, the, the Tigers had managed to inflict a lot of damage in Colombo itself to disrupt uh, the airport, for example, uh, making commercial life very difficult and just making life terribly, terribly difficult. So there was a, there was a ceasefire negotiated in which certain battle lines were, were respected, certain t areas and territory was respected. And it was at that point that uh, the Forum of Federations was asked if we could give some advice to the process about what a possible uh, federal-type arrangement might, uh, might look like. And we, we did our level best. Uh, I traveled there uh, many, many times, went to all the conferences, uh, met with the uh, LTTE leaders uh, in, in the jungle, essentially, along with uh, David Cameron, who's the chairman of the political science department at the University of Toronto and a number of other international experts uh, who we brought in. Uh, and uh, we did our level best to, uh, to try to get the parties to move off uh, this, this, this notion that you either have a, a uni unitary country or you have uh, two countries uh, to sort of trying to look at some sort of uh, other devolved federal model as a possible solution. And frankly, there wasn't uh, enough take up uh, really from either side. And then eventually uh, the conflict uh, was, uh, was reignited. Well, indeed, the ceasefire ended just over a year ago. And, and in fact, the Tamil Tigers at one point controlled 15,000 square kilometers of the island. But now the Sri Lankan army is on the verge of retaking the last few dozen square kilometers that the Tamils still hold. What, in your view, was responsible for this reversal of fortune? Uh, well, I think the, uh, the Sri Lankan army was uh, very well equipped. I mean, there's a lot of changes that took place in Sri Lanka, I mean, the political system in the south, uh, in the, amongst the majority Sinhala population, is quite complicated. But let's just say that a a a, a president with a more uh, militant approach, uh, President Rajapaksa, uh, took power. His brother uh, became the Minister of Defense, uh, and I think they essentially decided that uh, it was impossible, from their perspective, to talk to. The Tigers and all the ti from their perspective, they saw the Tigers building up their military position while there was a ceasefire, and there wasn't really any effective disarming going on. Nor was there really much meeting of minds about any possible solutions, uh, and so the the uh, the fighting resumed. It actually had been there'd been a lot of fighting gone on before the, the ceasefire was officially ended by the government. Uh, and uh, the government has uh, is very well armed right now. They've uh, they've been receiving uh, arms from Pakistan and uh, from Iran, uh, among a number of other places. Uh, and as I said, I think the post 9/11 era uh, has made it more difficult for the LTTE to, uh, to 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 be able to establish the kinds of networks which would have allowed them to uh, to respond militarily as effectively as they obviously would have liked to. And frankly, they've you know they've they've been pushed way way back, uh, and uh, the we now see a situation where you've got a, a a very small piece of land in the north east corner of the island, uh, which is essentially a jungle uh, with a lot of tunnels because that's the, you know the LTT built the tigers built these tunnel this whole tunnel system to allow them to get around, uh, and uh, a lot of civilians who are either being held uh, or uh, simply staying there because they don't know where else to go. Uh, and the UN estimates that as many as a quarter of a million people could still be there. The Sri Lankan government insists it's less than that, but still it's a very large number of civilians. Uh, and there's no question that their lives are at risk, and we've lost a lot of lives in the last several weeks. No journalists can go there. Uh, very little humanitarian aid can get in. 
Uh, there are allegedly some camps which are supposed to be safe, but there's some evidence that uh, one of the hospitals, for example, was uh, was bombed. Uh, the Red Cross is able to do a little bit, uh, but the humanitarian situation is uh, extremely tense and extremely difficult. Uh, this is a bit of a complicated question to ask with just a couple of minutes left here, but I'm going to try <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time that it happened to you. Uh, on the streets of Toronto a few weeks ago, there were enormous demonstrations. I think about, uh, you know, 40, 30, 40,000 people yep. uh, demonstrating up Bay Street. Tamils who were alleging that what's transpiring today in this country amounts to genocide. And I believe as well there were a handful of Liberal MPs who were content to use that word to describe what's going on as well. Do you think it is? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's complicated. I mean, I don't know whether it, there's much... I don't know whether we gain a lot from using the word. There's certainly, a, a, you certainly have a quarter of a million Tamils uh, whose lives are at risk because the there is no humanitarian ceasefire as the, as the rest of the world has asked, and the Sri Lankan government is determined uh, to to put an end to the LTTE for good forever. Uh, and in the course of that, the the terrible risk is that an awful lot of civilian lives will be lost and I can certainly understand the powerful emotion that many many Tamils feel around the world uh, that their people are are uh, are at risk are being subject to persecution are living in terrible conditions in the jungle are living terrible conditions in camps there's evidence of absolutely appalling medical conditions there's lack of food there's a lack of humanitarian assistance so I mean I would certainly say there's there's there are people at risk and there are people who are who are being killed because of where they are uh, and because of the terrible circumstance in which they uh, they find themselves. Okay, Mr. Ray, we thank you for your insights on this and uh, look forward to the discussion that is to come immediately after this interview. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. It's good to talk to you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin was presented by Valet Inco Limited a pioneering nickel mining company transforming mineral resources into essential ingredients for everyday life. Ontario's 33,000 chartered accountants, public policy leaders since 1879. More information is available at casforchange.ca.